Hey, hey everybody, Jay here. Welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna to do a quick overview of the CNC machining process. If you're new or unfamiliar to CNC machines and you don't know what they are, it's pretty basic. CNC stands for Computer Numerical Control. And so basically, there are lots of different CNC machines. Any machine that's controlled by a computer is technically a CNC machine. But today we're gonna to be talking about CNC milling machines. Specifically, the Sile X7 is what we're gonna be using. When you take a computer, and a good old fashioned milling machine, and you smash them up, you end up with a computer controlled milling machine, a CNC milling machine. So it's pretty basic. Just like any other computer, these, these computer controlled milling machines, they need to be programmed, and we do that using G code. Now, G code is just, G stands for geometric or geometry, and there are two different types of codes, two primary types of codes in G code. There's the G code commands, these generally command movement, tells the machine, where to move and how fast to do it and then there are m codes and generally speaking the g code commands motion and m codes turn things on and off things like coolant or starting and stopping the spindle things like this the first step in the process is pretty basic we need to receive a drawing from our customer sometimes they'll send us a 2d drawing and we need to create a 3d model or sometimes they'll send us our own 3d model uh, in the form of a step file but once we've got the drawing the second step is to import that model into our CAM system that stands for Computer Aided Manufacturing. And in your CAM software, that's where you're gonna create all of your tool paths to tell the machine what to do. Now we're gonna use Fusion 360 to both design and program the part. You can use any software you want. I chose Fusion 360 because it's relatively inexpensive and quite capable and it's easy to work with. You can see here are a few different tool paths that I've selected. And we're gonna do a few more videos that show you why you might want to choose a specific tool path and how to calculate things like speeds and feeds, how fast to spin the spindle and uh, how fast to feed the cutter through the material in future videos. You can see right here that we've set the work origin to the back left corner of the part. And this is important. You'll see later as we set the part up in the machine. In the next step, we're going to head out into the machine shop and we're actually going to install the vise. We're going to use an indicator to sweep across the solid fixed jaw of the vise to make sure that it's parallel to the x-axis. We're going to install our tools in the spindle and we're going to touch them off on the tool setter so that the machine knows exactly how so that the machine knows exactly how long each of the different tools uh, is. Today we're using a six inch vise. We're going to hold the vise in the machine using bolts and t-nuts and we're going to make sure that the vise is square or parallel to the x-axis by sweeping an indicator across the solid jaw. And then if it's out of alignment, we can gently tap it with a plastic hammer until it's nice and parallel to the x-axis. Once we have the vise parallel to the x-axis, we'll lock it down nice and tight. And next, we need to clamp our piece of material in the vise jaws. It's worth noting here that if we want to maximize precision and minimize deflection, we could use a torque wrench to make sure that we're using the exact same force each time we close the vise. Now that our stock material is loaded, we're going to set the work offset, which we already defined back in our cam system. We're gonna use the Heimer 3D tester to set the X, Y, and Z work offset. For this part, we're gonna use the back left corner for the X and Y location and the top of the stock for the Z location. Sometimes the definition of an offset can be a little bit confusing, but more often than not, the term offset just means either a location within the machine's work envelope or a length measurement in the case of something like a tool. Now that we have set up our tools, we've loaded them into the machine, installed and indicated our vise, we set our tool and our work offsets. Now there's just one thing to do, load our program and press cycle start. I hope you guys enjoyed this CNC machining overview. These are the basic steps required to make parts using a CNC milling machine. CNC machining definitely has a steeper learning curve than something like 3D printing, but it's very satisfying and it's a really valuable skill set to have.
I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video just as much as I did making it. We'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.